Hello ladies and gentlemen, Teveron here and welcome to a first look at the Great Well Road. I know very little about this game except it's supposed to be a story driven RPG with turn based type battles. And the art style from the screenshots and from this loading screen looks a lot like Banner Saga. So let's check it out together, shall we? The Danes. The Danes. Settling in Ulfarstead are hardy folks, and they have to be. Their hamlet is close to the Saxon borderlands, and they aren't far from a major trading route, which connects Dorstad in the south with Ripa in the north. All this makes it a prime target for opportunistic or cross-border raids. Alright. Oh, we're choosing our culture. Coming soon, coming soon. Gotcha. So I guess we uh, we are the Danes. So I apologize if I mispronounce anything that is Danish in nature, as I am not Danish. I will do my best. The leaves have begun to change their colors, and the sun grows cold. Winter draws near, yet the ship has not returned. The Jarl of your hold sat cell with his Huskarls early this summer. They sailed south to answer a missive from the Jarl's brother, who begged them to travel to the land of the Saxons. Your Jarl is a respected man, a skilled trader who has dealt with the Saxons in slaves, horn combs, and amber. He knows when to claim guest right, and when to assert his authority with steel. You received word that he had landed on the Saxon shore, and you expected his return in late summer. Then, silence. Summer slipped away over many long weeks, yet you heard nothing. Finally, a messenger arrived, bringing with him the stink of death. The treacherous Saxons ambushed your warriors and put everyone to the sword. Every member of your village lost a brother, a son, a sister, a sweetheart. All mourn, and this winter seems colder than any in memory. Ulfersted, I think that's how you pronounce that. It's the closest estimation I can do anyway. Ah, select your leader. The Saxons' treachery has left Ulfersted leaderless. Losing so many warriors has weakened the small settlement's defenses. The village elders, including war hero Katil, will elect a new leader. The new Jarl will need to train warriors, see to justice and governance in the village, and prepare for winter. Most of the Jarl's obvious successors were with him during the ambush. This election will not be a simple one. Okay, you are Bera. You have survived two husbands and many winters. Defending your farmstead from raiders, you are the head of your family and have a reputation for toughness and wisdom. You are Floki, nephew to the Jarl. Some say you should inherit the heavy mantle of your uncle's position. You spend more time practicing with the lyre than the sword, but you know your cool head and sharp tongue can be more valuable than a spear. Okay. Uh, I tend to want to play female characters in RPGs. I find them to be more interesting, so we shall do, this, do that again this time. Continue. Katel grins while he moves his spear through various overhand forms. You haven't done much fighting lately. Rusty weapons and weak warriors. It's high time to put some oak back into all of us. Okay, Cato has a weak left knee, but his eyesight is still sharp. He sent a score of enemies to feast in Odin's Hall. Okay. 
Sure, let's show us how it's done then. You roll your shoulders and enter the fray. I guess this is the battle tutorial. Combat in the Great Well Road is turn-based. Okay, during our turn we can place heroes, use war cries, move, attack or waylay, or end our turn. To deploy, select them and choose one of the starting positions to place them. Each hero has a round number for when they can be deployed into battle. The hero's loyalty to you defines when they when you can deploy them. All right. War cry name and the cost, the effect. Each hero has three war cries. War cry points. You start with a full pool. You gain extra by defeating your enemies. To use a war cry, select it and choose which hero you want to use it on. Great. Uh, choosing attack or waylay ends the action phase for that hero. Weapons have different ranges. Some weapons have two attack types. Each attack type has different properties and may inflict side effects. Waylay is an intercept stance that allows you to hit enemies that move near your weapon's range. It will always use the primary attack of your weapon, but has a minus 25% hit chance penalty. Any hit you take will interrupt this stance. Gotcha. Sort of an overwatch, in other words. Three attack types. Slash is the most balanced. Have average damage and critical chance. Blunt. If the enemy has any defense points, this type will concentrate on breaking them away. Okay, just like using a, a mace against someone in full plate. It's much more effective than a sword. Gotcha. It removes two defense points instead of just one. And piercing. When this type of attack is blocked, it will also deal one damage along with breaking one defense point at the expense of some accuracy. Gotcha. Pressing the end turn button when you're done or to skip your turn without using every hero. When ending your turn, heroes that have not attacked or assumed a waylay stance will go automatically into their defensive stance. This stance gives your heroes 100% block chance and they will block very... Very... Okay, that's a typo. And they will block every attack as long as they have defense points. The defensive stance also repairs broken shields. Good to know. In battle, each side has a leader that can be identified by their ornamental base. If a leader falls, their warband receives a penalty to their war cry points. Some battles can be won by defeating the enemy leader. Enemy leaders can call for reinforcements. When you see a horn icon above your head, above their head rather, hit them as much as you can to interrupt them. You can toggle the visibility of the character info by pressing the stat button on the top right corner of the screen. Okay. Good deal. Let's get into this. Okay, help button. Gotcha. Defeat the leader. So this is the leader because they have the gold around their base, apparently. And these are our heroes. This guy, I guess, can't be deployed till round three. All right. Ah, gotcha. Okay, well, I think we want to stick together as much as possible. Oh, is this movement or are we still placing? I'm not sure. Hopefully the game will not destroy us. We're kind of learning here. I think we want to end there. Then we'll take you, put you here. Looks like we don't actually have any ranged characters. I don't know how far these can move, but if it's the same distance as this, I think I want to let them con come to us so we can end our turn. Okay, so these guys are on Overwatch, as we can see by the eye there. So we can get the first attack on this one, it seems. Though to win this, all the all that we have to defeat is him. I don't know if it's worth it to rush him. We can't get to him in this one move. So let's go after this guy. Ah, yeah, he was on Overwatch, so he got to hit us. But his shield's broken. Let's attack him. 
Slash has 72% chance to hit. Two hits, two to four damage, 5% crit. I guess this four shields is his armor, so we should do that. All right. Yeah, bear with me, folks. I'm, I'm not at all familiar with this system yet. Let's attack. Looks like all his... No, only two of his armor is gone. I, I wonder why it says three hits. Because this guy said two hits, our guy, but he only hit once. Hmm. Okay. So that ostensibly broke through his armor. Let's move this girl up to here. And put her on waylay. Oh, looks like we've got another person down there. Didn't see them. Oh, that's us. Is this our war cry then? Plus 15 evasion for two turns? Oh, okay. Gotcha. So we have to do that, I guess, when we're not at... Or maybe we select. Okay, I'm, I'm still not for sure about this. I guess we end the turn. Alright, glad our guys are pretty tanky. At least that one seems to be. Alrighty. Let's see if we can do this then. Okay. Um, let's put it on him since he's tanking a lot of the damage. Alright. And we can deploy this guy now, right? Yes, we can. Let's put you here and move you up to here. See, see, you've got focus, uh, plus 10 AC for two turns. Yeah, let's use that. Then we're going to attack this one and break the armor or not, just miss entirely. That's great. All right, you plus 15 AC. All right, we're going to do that. Can we not? Okay, guess not. Let's go ahead and attack this one again since we've been pounding on him. Looks like we didn't get rid of the... Oh, it's Pierce on this one, not Blunt. I need to pay, pay attention to that. Let's slash. Okay, now I see what the multiple hits are. It only shows one animation, but they pop up on that little banner there. It showed uh, two damage getting through. So, you, let's attack this dude. You've got blunt and slash. Gotcha. Let's break the rest of the armor. I should have attacked with him first. Got to get used to the tactics of this. So, the armor's completely broken on him and on him, it looks like. Okay, you, you have focus as well. I guess we shared the whole pool of points up here and we've used too many. Gotcha. I thought each individual one had a pool, but that's fine. Uh, let's move you to here. And we will put you on waylay again. And I think that's our turn. Okay, lost a bunch of armor there. Finally got our leader hurt. Okay, our turn. Let's uh, attack here. All the armor's gone, so we can use slash. Nice. That's a lot of damage. Let's take this guy down start eliminating our enemies here. 
Ah, uh, three hits. Nice. And we got some points again. Awesome. So, we could use someone's ability. His is... Um... Okay, well, uh, let's just attack then. Okay. Uh, plus AC. I don't think we need that at present. Let's just move you to here. There, there we go. And attack you. See, you've got slash and pierce. Let's use pierce since it's more accurate for you. And I think that's everyone moved, isn't it? Yep, yeah, seems to be, in turn. Alright, this guy is getting quite hurt. We may need to pull him back a bit. Or put him in a defensive stance, which will fix broken shields, it said. So let's do that. Oh, it looks like he doesn't have a defensive stance. Maybe we just need to pass the turn without moving him. Alright. Let's move you up to here. And attack this one. Blunt. Try to break some shields. Alright. And we'll just keep pounding here. And that was excellent. Maybe we can take this one down. Yes, we can. Nice. I suspect that things will get harder as the game goes on. All right, yeah, fixed his shields there. Probably should do that with our leader as well. All right. Let's start to surround our target here. All right, hit him for a little bit. Uh, let's try your blunt. Nice. Now that you've got your armor back, we'll move you here. Have you attack. And you hit once. And I think we're just going to pass without using you so that you'll get your shields back. Nice. Oh, looks like you have longer range with that spear. It's good to know. Our turn. What is your movement radius? Well, let's move you over here. Oop. Move you here. There we go. See, we want to use someone who has a blunt attack, don't we? I think that's you. Yes, blunt. But you missed. That sucks. Can we get you? We can. We're just going to concentrate on their leader as that's our objective. More blunt. Hit once, okay. Get rid of some armor. Slashing. There we go. Whittling him down. If we could hit him. Alright, well luckily we've not lost anyone yet. Let's keep going with the blunt attacks, trying to break his armor completely. Nice. 
All his armor's gone, so we don't have to worry about blunt attacks now. We do have to worry about someone completely missing, though. There we go. And miss. Not very accurate, is he? Of course, I mean, it is a percentage. So even with a 99 percentile chance, you're, you're bound to miss some of the time. All right. I do wish it would auto in turn when we've done all our actions, though. He is running away. And got his armor back, so we should probably take this opportunity to get rid of this dude. Hmm. Well, let's wait on that. Let's move you here and use your blunt. Completely broken, so that's good. If you could please stop missing, that would be awesome. There we go. Uh, in turn. Oh, I forgot to attack with that guy, didn't I? My bad. At least he got some armor back. Looks like he put up some sort of a buff. Let's see. 44% block chance. Alright. Alright, one more hit should do it. That was a good hit. All right, let's start shredding this armor again. Alright, what is he doing? Just defending over and over? Ah, was in waylay. Gotcha. Alright. We want to move you up so that we can sure get this guy in there. Enemies lie on the ground, bleeding and hopeless. Excellent. I will say the combat seems a little tedious for my taste, but if you like the turn-based sort of miniatures thing, then you might like this quite a bit. Let's see, get into the game and see what the story is like. Katil warns you that the village is not well prepared, neither for winter nor for the next sailing season. The elders are bickering between themselves and with the Godar. Don't know what that is. All the while, the food stocks get lower and the Jarl's silver chest is nearly empty. Okay, the village barn is empty. Where are all the oats? The gods have forsaken us. I've seen clubs with a sharper edge than this sword. So we can gather all the food from the barns and outlying farms, sacrifice two oxen to honor Odin and Freya, Ask everyone to hand over some of their silver so you will be able to buy weapons next summer. Food is probably the most pressing thing. So, the farmers had more food squirreled away than you expected. You will have to ration some staples and there will be some grumbling, but there is enough food to make it through the winter. Good. <clears throat> 
population to assign. Ten. Uh, the village ping? Not sure if that's actually a P or some other letter I'm unfamiliar with. It's where you plan the development and survival of your settlement. Your current resources are shown at the top of the screen. Once summer begins, you will see the first results of your planning. And when you return from your journey, you will see the population to assign. The first three areas provide food for your people, so hunting, husbandry, and farming. Farming does not produce any food during winter, only during summer, while hunting and husbandry provide food during the whole year. Good to know. Uh, sometimes it will be convenient to split your efforts among these three areas, as the winter weather may diminish their returns. Warfare raises your defense against raids and boosts your hero's evolution. The warfare power accumulated during winter will increase the renown obtained by the heroes that you travel with, while the amount accumulated during summer is how much the heroes left at home will gain from the total renown obtained. Okay, this is a little complex. Diplomacy increases the benefits from trading and gives you better a better picture of the current year's market. Traditions increase your people's happiness, making them perform better at their jobs, keeping them healthy and alive. Craftsmanship produces multiple items of different value that are useful for trading. So it's also sort of a management game. The expected results can give you an idea of the outcome of your production planning. The final results may depend on how the year treats your people. Producing more than enough food stocks will encourage population growth. Producing less than necessary will cause some to starve and die. Leftovers from one season will carry over to the next. On average, one food stock is enough to feed five people. During winter, you can also improve your production areas and your ship. Upgrades require trading goods. Your people can produce some of these items, but most require traveling out and visiting the marketplaces along the well road. Hence the name. Upgrading the production areas increases their production results and how many people you can assign to them. You can upgrade your ship to make it more seaworthy, and most especially, to increase how many heroes you can take. Alright, that's a lot to absorb. We'll just do our best. Alright, so it's winter, right? I think they said it was winter. It looks like there's snow on the ground. Yes, winter planning. So we don't want people assigned... Well, they said that winter would not produce anything, but it looks like they're, that it will. So 480 down to 316 if we move you here. So it, farming is definitely more beneficial. We've got 11 more to assign. 2% happiness bonus. Hmm. We want to be safe. So let's max out on Warfare. We'll max out on Diplomacy. Make some trade goods. Yeah, let's max out on that. We've got two people left to assign. Let's put one of them into Traditions. And let's boost our food production a bit. I mean, I'm really not certain how I should be assigning these, but we're going to do our best here. Winter has arrived. The weather on land is mild enough, but the well road turns into an angry and fickle beast once the leaves change color. Day 5 A winter storm has been lying over the islands for days. Rain from the whatever that is has been falling continuously. Nordsay? Nordsea? Maybe? Neither man nor livestock enjoy being drenched, miserable, and cold. The smell of wet wool and wet animals mixes with the smoke of the cooking fires. You need to improve the mood of the villagers before there is trouble. Hmm. So, the happiness is down. We've brewed a lot of winter ale. Let's have a drinking contest. You are already drinking every day. Let's compete with, po with poetry. Let's have a wrestling competition. Huh. So we get to choose how to raise the spirits. Yes. Let's have a poetry reading. But ale drinking can be added in as well. 
Looks like we got 1% happiness from that. All contestants have to drink a horn with ale and then recite two lines of a poem. 48 lines later, the last drinker falls face first onto a table. Everyone agrees that it was a great feast. Well, success then. Oh wow, we just skipped a lot of days. Maybe this is just where the tutorial is. That the days are passing so quickly here. A small flock of sheep is missing in the morning. It seems like they ran off when the wind broke a gate. It looks like one or two of the village guard dogs followed them into the night. So we can send the shepherd boys. Uh, I'm not going out in this weather. The dogs will bring them back. Better send some grown folks. There have been outlaws and wolves around lately. I agree with that one. Small band of warriors and hunters. That seems for the best. Did it not take my click? There we go. Nice. Good good choice there, it seems. Your group surprises a band of outlaws busy feasting on some of your sheep. You kill the leader and the others throw down their weapons. You hang them all. Well, we could have adopted them into our village, maybe, but that's not the way of these people. All right, yeah. Because of winter, we got none. Expected for a, so we should have moved these people off of farming. Even though it said expected, we should have accounted for the winner and moved them away. Now we know, though. Now you know, too, if you play this game. All right, we got a lots of stuffs. Goods produced, whatever these are. That looks like amber. Home settlement. Yep. Ulferstad is your home settlement. Here you can view your warband information, browse your storage, and purchase weapons at the blacksmith. To journey out, you can choose a quest from the journal or map. Alrighty. Storage. Amber. It is amber. Horn combs. Mead. We're quite low on mead. Wolfhounds. Livestock. A decent amount of food. Tools and materials for repairing your ship. So do the productions that we choose just go all year? So maybe we couldn't have put the farmers on something else because then in the spring and summer they wouldn't have been on farming. Alright, let's look at our war band. Your heroes are essential to complete your quest. You would need them for survival, investigations, and battle. Each time you journey out, you need to choose which heroes should accompany your leader. Each hero has their own adventure stats, battle stats, and personality traits. During your adventures, you will be able to hire new heroes or convince them to join your cause. Health is the life of your hero. Yeah, we kind of know that. If your leader is gravely wounded, you will fail your current quest. Endurance shows how tired your hero is. The higher their endurance, the more tasks they can perform. Morale is your hero's happiness. The higher the morale, the better they perform. Each hero has a different threshold for each stat. When one of these stats drops below its minimum threshold, it will affect, it will affect the other stats negatively. Alright, HP, DP, defense points, uh, hit is the amount of hits the hero can perform, okay, accuracy, and then evasion, gotcha. Equipping weapons and armor can change these stats, the hero's class, and weapon proficiency define what type of equipment they can use. Heroes also have their own personality traits, which influence their opinions during some events. He has done the clan a service by saving the boy. Freeing him is the traditional reward, there is a blood debt to be repaid. Some of their opinions are informative, while others hint which of the choices they expect you to choose. Depending on your words and deeds, some heroes will change their loyalty towards you. In return, your leadership change rating changes. In battle, these two values determine your starting heroes and war cry points. Gotcha. So these are our heroes. This is us, rank 1. Got Slash and Blunt, the Axe Hammer. Warrior Coat. So her proficiency is Axe. His is Spear. Spear. So she's Assault. These two are Heavies. 
So three heavies, one assault, and one support. So I'm not actually sure what the support classes, what the classes all do. I would imagine support would be a healer type. Okay, this shows their war cries they get at each rank. I guess rank two is a choice. We probably can't take both of these. Anyway, let's get some equipment. All right. Where is our money? It's looking like we can't buy any of these as they're redded out. I don't see where it shows what our money is. I'm guessing we have none. We can't buy anything, so we are as we are on this one then. So how do we actually set sail? Oh, I guess we do set journey in the journal here. Oh, okay, yeah. Before you can leave on a journey, you need to make preparations. Choose which heroes to take with you and fill all of the hero slots on your ship. Your warband leader and warriors will be added automatically. Heroes are automatically added if a quest requires them. Load your ship with provisions and trading goods. You don't need to completely fill your ship, but you should at least pack enough food for your crew. If you don't take enough food, however, your heroes will struggle to manage their resources and their adventure stats will deplete. Once you are done, press the Begin Journey button to begin your quest. Fair enough. Alright, so we only have room for four here. Okay. So, how do we... Ah, there we go. Well, I think we want to take another Heavy here. Ah, okay. And I think we also want to take our support. So we've got an assault, two heavies, and a support. Confirm. So he's going to be a healer after he levels up. I take it. Daily food consumption is three. Total days, one. Load goods. Let's see. Value of that's eight. These are more valuable. So... Ah, and they only take up one slot. Awesome. Value 7. Do we want to trade away all of our mead? Let's take three of it. I guess that can be a trading good. Hmm. It's very valuable. We do want to take some, uh, food. Let's take... Ah, it doesn't have enough space. So this is all the space we take. Or we have. Confirm. Tools. What are tools for? Is that to repair the ship? Maybe we should do that. Yeah, let's take the ale out of here. And add in some tools. Alright. Confirm. Uh, I'm not sure if we're doing this correctly, but let's go. Your new crew must learn to carry your banner abroad. They will also have the chance to buy new weapons and equipment. Most of the good chainmail was lost with your Jarl's warband, apart from Katil's Bernie. All of your weapons are rusted and nicked. Luckily, there are plenty of spears and shields left though you long for a proper sword or war axe. Quests and sailing. When you go on a quest, your resources are related to what you are carrying on your ship. Out at sea, your heroes will gradually consume food and lose adventure stats, and your ship receives some damage. To recover those stats, you need to spend the night in a camp or settlement. If you spend the night on the ship, you will not be able to recover. Makes sense. 
As you sail along the Great Whale Road, your ship will take damage, and the more damage it takes, you risk losing crew members. If you have less crew members than the maximum amount your ship can carry, the less likely it will be able to reach higher speeds. To keep your ship intact, stop at a location and spend tools to repair it, so it's a good thing we brought tools. If your ship receives too much damage, you will fail your current quest. Gotcha. While sailing, one of the warband members hears a wood scratching noise coming from the cargo. When investigating further, the member informs you that there is a rat infestation on the ship. What do you do? Looks like we've got a timer here. Poison the rats? Burn the nest? No. Uh, we don't want to poison our food supplies. Let's squish them. You are covered in blood and rat guts. The rats are dead and you need a bath. Fair enough. There's water all around us. All right, used five food. Um, oh, we can visit. Gotcha. So this was our destination. I wonder if I hadn't clicked on it, if we would have bypassed it. It was a short trip to Withstaith, or however you pronounce that name. The seat of an un the seat of an underking and a beach market. It is a small marketplace but well maintained. The beach can be accessed freely, but any attacker would be a practice target for every warrior with a throwing spear or bow behind a ramp and palisade. The hall itself is on a low hill behind a separate wall. For many of you, this is the first time you have left the island in your life. And Katil tells you not to wander off on your own. Alright, so we can go to a trader, to a hunter. We can purchase and sell goods at a trader. Uh, assign heroes to go out hunting for more food. I don't really think we're going to need more food. You can send them to the hall for endurance and health recovery. The tavern can feed them and raise their morale. We got indications over here of how they're doing. Can't really click on them at the moment. The healer will recover them to full health for a fee. And we can buy equipment at the blacksmith. Also assign heroes to repair your ship. Our ship's at 20 of 20 though, so we're fine. These tasks will either spend or recover the assigned hero's adventure stats. To confirm all your assignments, press the stay overnight button. And to leave, set sail. Alright. So his morale's kind of low. In fact, everyone's except for Floki's morale is pretty low, so let's send the other two to the tavern. Which is here. Wish we could click and drag, but double clicking's fine, I suppose. Confirm. Where is our gold? It says we're spending 12. I guess it's this right here. We got 114. Gotcha. All right. We need to trade. Guess we can do this without assigning folks. Alrighty. Well, they will pay six a piece for these. Let's sell it all. And also six a piece for these. Nice. What are these? Used to make tools and game pieces. They got raw lumber. And cloth. I'm not sure what we need is the thing. So we're just going to take our money for now. Then uh, nobody else really needs to do anything, I don't think. What is this? Oh, no. Cancel. I guess guess we should send someone out to hunt let's see what the blacksmith has 
balanced Norse sword. That's a lot of monies. We could... Well, nobody that we have right now seems to use a sword. Maybe the weapon they have equipped is not their only weapon they can use, but I'm not going to spend the money on that at present. We'll buy from our own blacksmith, thank you. See, where was... Ah, oh, there's hunting. Yep. Oh, we could have brought a dog along, along couldn't we? Sure. This will lower their endurance, but that's fine. Let's do that. Stay overnight. You hear the bellowing of aurochs behind a ridge. They are big and dangerous, and it would take a while to smoke the meat. But their horns are priced. I think that should be prized, a Z there instead of a C, as drinking horns. The largest ones can hold 10 pints of ale. I didn't know aurochs actually existed during this time. Those are giant cow-like things. I mean, very, very big. So that is interesting. I thought they died off long before this, but apparently not. We need practice and a big bull as a start. We can sell the horns, but is it worth getting killed by an angry cow? Uh, I don't know that it is. We could trap it to kill with spears, split up into two small groups to trap in a pit. That sounds better. Let's try that. Took a while to dig a pit deep enough and to trap the animal, but you caught a big bull and no one got hurt. That is the goal. Awesome. So I'm actually really liking the story and management aspects of this game. Uh, not quite as big a fan of the combat. Looks like our leader's energy is quite low. Yeah, I'm not quite for sure what we are needing to pick up here. Um, how long do we stay? Ship storage. We've got a pelt. This was from the Arak, I suppose. Ah, okay. Just as you reach the market area, you fall onto your face and straight into a dung heap. You wipe the shite from your face while ignoring the raucous laughter all around you. The warrior who has tripped you kicks you viciously in the stomach and you wonder what qualifies as a warm welcome here. You are embarrassed but also relieved when you hear Katel's voice. He urges the warrior to continue if he wants to be gelded. Is that how you welcome fellow Danish traders here nowadays? Uh, let's let Katil deal with it. He seems to be handling it just fine. The group of warriors isn't cowed by the old hero. You get a chance to restore your honor. So I guess we're into battle. All right. 
flawless victory. Gained 40 silver too, nice. Yeah, I'm not, I'm personally, I'm not a huge fan of uh, the combat in this game. Uh, I find it a little clunky and uh, it drags on a bit. But again, that is all to each person's preference. Can we set sail? What else do we need to do? Our ship is in good shape. We should probably let our two that need to rest, so... Confirm. Uh, we could send our other two out hunting. Of course, that would use up some of their stamina. How do we set sail? Yeah, I'm not certain. Maybe we just need to stay here a certain number of days? Okay, map screen. You can see which known locations have quests for you to complete. So the ships where we're at. Main story quest, side quest. Okay. There is a main story quest here. This is where we're from. This is where we're at. Okay, these are the available goods. We just traded a bunch of these and these. Hmm. Okay. Maybe we're supposed to buy goods? I'm just, I'm just not certain, honestly. Let's stay overnight. Oop, a new thing popped up here. This is the story quest. Okay, I understand now. So we may need to buy food since we've been here a couple of days. Uh, let's do that. Yeah, our food is down to... Oh no, we've got 63. So we're we're fine. We're absolutely fine. Let's see what this quest is. With Staith and its traders are an exotic sight. Catel is amused when you ogle a trader from far away Byzantium. He has the darkest skin you have ever seen. Until one of his guards appears out of a tent. A giant. Even if he were a half-troll geet as black as sea coal. You are mesmerized by the quality of the silks, weapons, and other luxury items on show. But most is far beyond the handful of hack silver in your purse. Catel introduces you to a trader, Heldebald, from a place called Spania. He knew your Jarl well, and had been asked to buy a Frankish sword for him. He hands the weapon to you, and asks you to pick a gift from his wares, as the sword was less expensive than expected. Okay, so Catel says take some wine and give me that sword. Uh, this dude says wool trousers are really itchy. Our support guy says a warband runs on silver. For the last few days, it ran on moldy bread and wrinkly parsnips. Huh, so all of these are valid choices. But I'm going to go with Katil as he is the wisest of our people and get some wine. Heldebald gives you a small barrel of red from Spania, which is sweet and strong, but you can't take your hands off of the sword. Nice, so we got a Norse sword. Your first journey quest completed. Awesome. Can we use that sword, or should we give it to our buddy there? Huh. Let's see. Where is this sword, and how do we equip it? Going south. You have to travel south to revenge the dead. Your laws demand a price. The Saxons would not be able to pay a wear guild that high, so the price will have to be paid in blood. Make sure that you are ready as you will travel through hostile territory. Sell to Arxum. And he has to go. 
All right. No one seems to be able to use the sword, or I just don't know how to equip it. We can return home. What have we got in here that warrants looking at? Okay, this. Hmm. Yeah, let's head home. After your return from Withstaff, you spend the rest of the summer being chased over the training field by Katil, and you are losing count of how many times you had to form a shield wall and how many bruises you have received. The season goes by quickly and the leaders of the nearby clans know that Ulfrestad has teeth again. Good. Ah, level up? Doesn't surprise me, he did a ton of damage in that last battle. Year two, everyone is someone at home. Okay, and we assign people, so we do assign everyone at the start of the year. We have an additional a population to assign here. Everything down here is full. So let's put this person into getting some more food. Day 60. All right, looks like we're getting into a bit more of the story. I wanted to kind of look at how leveling up worked, but I don't know when it's going to let us do that. But I think we're going to end this first look here. Seems to be a good idea of what this game is all about. I find the story and these little decision trees and things to be very interesting. I like that. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the combat. I know there are some people who will be, so that is a plus for them. I will leave a link in the description to the store page on Steam. It is available right now for $19.99 or your regional equivalent. I have been Tevron, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.